All right, this is Miss Woolley reading you chapter five from your book, Playground Millionaire by Cleo Edison Oliver. Chapter five is called The Name Game. Cleo found her desk close to the door. They had just come in. It was pulled together with three others, same as all the desks in the room. She checked the folded paper name tents in her group. Nuts and Nintendo, Kaylee wasn't one of her table buddies. Really quick before that interrupts us. Okay. Instead, Cleo would be sitting next to none other than Cole Lewis, Mr. BMOC, big man of the classroom. Cole was working the room, giving fancy handshakes and fist bumps to his buddies. Everyone loved Cole, including Kaylee. Cleo was not as impressed. The fact that he was Lexi Lewis's twin probably didn't help. Kaylee was one table over on the other side where Cole would be when he finally stopped chatting it up. Kaylee was changing her first name from Michaela to Kaylee on her name tent. She and Cleo had come up with a nickname in second grade so that they could have the same first and last initials. Cleo grabbed her name tent, pulled her favorite purple pen from her backpack, and wrote Edison in cramped, sloping letters between Cleopatra and Oliver. Then she added a comma and CEO to the end. Lucky Kaylee. She was sitting across from sophisticated and stylish Amelia Martinet, a girl with beautiful, long, reddish-brown hair who spoke three languages and whose family vacationed in faraway places like France and the Cape Verde Islands. Sitting across from Cleo was Maka Mitchell, who had a reputation for armpit farting and breaking into song at totally inappropriate times. The fourth seat belonged to Anusha Chatterjee. With the last name, you might have thought she was born to talk like Cole Lewis apparently had been. But she was the quietest girl in the whole school. Cleo would bring her out of her shell. That's probably why Mr. Boring had put them together. Hi, Anusha. Did you have a good summer? Yes, Anusha bent over to put her things in her desk, and that was the end of the conversation. Ah, well. All worthy projects took time. Cole's rear end finally made touchdown. He reached out and nudged Cleo's arm. Hey, Cleo, what's up? Fortune Enterprises stock, she said with satisfaction. She had looked online that morning. One day soon, she would be a shareholder herself. Cole gave her a funny look. He turned to Maka. How, how you doing, table buddy? They slapped a high five. You can think I'm strange all you want, Cole Lewis. I'll be laughing all the way to the bank. Mr. Boring blew into a small wooden thing. It looked like the carved handle of a crank at the top of a candlestick, but it quacked like a duck. Quack, quack, quack. The ridiculous sound definitely got their attention and also made everyone laugh. Cleo liked Mr. Boring already. Once everyone quieted down, Mr. Boring did not do the usual boring thing of calling roll. Instead, he announced in a TV game show voice, it's time for the name game. Cleo felt a rush of energy. She loved games. In the name game, each person would have a turn to tell the rest of the class about his or her name, where it came from, what it meant, why their parents chose it. The one rule was that there had to be no interruptions while the person was sharing and absolutely no poking fun. If a person did interrupt, Mr. Boring's three strikes and your in policy would take effect. Three strikes and you'll be inside for recess and there's no way you wanna spend your recess with me. My name is Mr. Boring after all. His eyes roamed the room. He was serious, but not clearly, but clearly not boring. Then he made them all raise their right hands and swear on their parents' good reputations that they would not interrupt. No way, no how. No way, no how, they repeated enthusiastically. 
Now, now that we have the formalities out of the way, let's play the game. Cleo was disappointed that this game didn't have a winner and even more disappointed when Mr. Boring started on the opposite side of the room. She was bursting with things to say, but still it would be fun to learn about people's names and how they got them. More fun than doing some time wasting assignment that was for sure. She listened more or less to her classmates all the while crafting what she would say about herself. Steffi Lee had been named after the midwife who delivered her. Tessa Hutchfield was named after her grandma. Amelia's parents had just liked the sound of the name. It was musical, which was fitting because so was Amelia. She had the best singing voice of anyone at New Heights Elementary. Kaylee McKella had been named after an archangel. Is an archangel like an archanemone? Quentin McDonald asked. He'd gotten his name, which meant five, from being the fifth kid in his family. Not exactly, Mr. Boring said, although they have this prefix in common, don't they? He wrote the words on the board and underlined the arc part on both. Arc means chief, so an archangel would be top dog in a company of angels, and an arch enemy would be someone's chief nemesis, his or her number one enemy. Cleo imagined Lexi Lewis's smug face. Kaylee, on the other hand, had been an arc friend since second grade. How had Cleo never known that her best friend was named after the top dog of a company? No wonder they had always gotten along so well. Finally, they got to Cleo's table. Cleo was about to raise her hand, but Mr. Boring called on Anusha first. She spoke so quietly. Mr. Boring had to ask her to repeat herself. Her name came from an Indian word that meant beautiful morning star. Everyone thought that was really cool. Cleo wondered if her name had a meaning. She'd have to look into that. She started to raise her hand again, but Cole got to go next. She had had butterflies in her stomach earlier, but not anymore. Now she had bats. This waiting was killing her. Cole was named after a famous singer, Nat King Cole. He started impersonating the man singing unforgettable that's what you are he was so cheesy chloe looked at kaylee planning to roll her eyes but kaylee's gaze was fixed on the singing fool why did her face look so dreamy oh kaylee mr boring asked cole if his twin sister was also named after someone famous she's named after a car cole snickered our mom always wanted to leave to have alexis Alexis, get it? Now he laughed loud, like a donkey. Maybe Cole Lewis wasn't so bad after all if he could laugh at his sister. Hmm, Lexi Lewis had been named after a car. Cleo would keep the info in her back pocket just in case. Finally, Mr. Boring called on her. And how about you, Cleopatra? She liked the way he said her name, long and drawn out with a trill on the R like an actor in one of those Shakespeare plays. I'm extremely curious to know how you got your intriguing name. Intriguing. He hadn't called on any of the other kids named that. Cleo's heart hammered. Her mouth went dry. She was still eager to share, but she was also crazy nervous, she realized. I got it for my birth mom, she began proudly. Your what? It was rowdy Jimmy Ryerson. Mr. Boring made a whistling sound and held up his hands in a tee. Time out, he said. Jimmy, that's strike one. Jimmy's name was the first to go on the board. Mr. Boring put a mark next to it. Please continue. The floor is all. His eyes roamed the room. Yours. Cleo liked the sound of that. She swallowed and kept going. My birth mom is the lady who gave birth to me. She looked at Jimmy, obviously. Before I was adopted, she had no problem with telling people she was adopted. It was, wasn't a big secret. She named me Cleopatra because Cleopatra was a powerful and smart woman who, and also a very beautiful African queen. And my birth mom wanted me to know that I'm these things too. She held up her name tent and pointed to where she added her middle name. My middle name is Edison, which is my mom's unmarried name. My mom who adopted me, I mean. We are definitely related to the genius inventor and entrepreneur Thomas Edison, but I don't, don't ask me how, because I don't remember. 
But you're not really related if you're adopted, are you, Jimmy Blurden? Mr. Boring eyed him, then added a second mark. Did I mention that their three strikes program lasts all day long? There's a lot of day left, Jimmy. In conclusion, Cleo pressed ahead with her prepared remarks in spite of the warmth in her cheeks and the shakiness that had come over her. My name is Cleopatra Edison Allen, president of Cleopatra Enterprises, Inc. She ran her hand under her name tent with a flourish. But you can just call me Cleo. She folded her hands on her desk and flashed them with her best CEO smile. <laughs> a few kids laughed, which was fine. She had meant for the audience to be entertained. Jimmy raised her hand. Mr. Boring hesitated. Yes, Jimmy. Why did that woman want you to think you're a queen? You can't be a queen unless you're from a royal family. Cleo sc scowled. Now she was getting mad. In her birth mom's eyes, I'm sure Cleo will always be a queen, Mr. Boring interjected. A pain shot through her chest as if her heart was were a peeled orange and someone had stuck in their thumbs and pulled it out in two sections. Mr. Boring smiled at her, a nice smile. He rushed, he rushed to her face. Cleo blinked away the tears that had sprung to her eyes in a surprise attack. Thank you for sharing, Cleo, Micah. Cleo didn't hear anything of what Micah said. The name game had turned out to be the lame game and a little bit the shame game. Anyway, it was a real stinker.